Hi guys, in this video I wanted to talk about um, my experience being um, pregnant and um, birth and all that stuff and kind of the story of how we found out that I was pregnant and everything leading up to that. Um, so uh, my son is two months old, his name is Silas. Um, I um, originally found out I was pregnant just kind of by my husband's doing really um we i think it was in february um i was you know the classic like i was like a week late and um that week we were going to a super bowl party and so i was like kind of excited i was like we're gonna go have fun probably drink um my husband doesn't drink so it would have just been me um but he was kind of like do you think that you could be pregnant you know if you have your week late and i was like nah that's that's not possible, um, or it could be, I guess, but I just didn't think it was an option because I was used to having, you know, irregular cycles. So, um, I just didn't think anything of it. Um, but my husband was kind of like, yeah, if you're planning on drinking at the Super Bowl party, you, you should take a pregnancy test. And I was like, fine, if that's going to make you happy, I'll do that. Um, cause I really just didn't think that that was even a thing. I wasn't going to be pregnant. Um, and so for whatever reason, my husband was at work and I wasn't, we're usually on the same schedule, but I just remember I went to the store and bought the pregnancy test and went home and took it by myself. Um, cause I just didn't think that I needed to wait. Cause again, I just didn't think it was going to be positive. Um, but it was, so I took a picture of it and sent it to my husband and, or he was my fiance at the time. And he was just like, all right. And so both of us were kind of like in the same mindset. We we're just like, okay, like, what do we do now? So I scheduled a doctor's appointment and I went to my first doctor's appointment and they, the lady did an ultrasound and she said that they couldn't see anything in it in there. And they said that they saw like the sack and that it was empty. And so there's like a word for it. I think it's like a topic or something like that. They thought, you know, it was a bad pregnancy. That's what they told me. She, she used the word, it's bad pregnancy. And I was like, okay, I mean, I, I guess so. And she said, let's wait a week, come back, we'll do another ultrasound and just double check. So I did and I came back and that one was the same results. She said she didn't see anything in there. She was giving me kind of the rundown of what I was gonna have to do next to, I guess, have that removed. Um, but she said that before we did that, she wanted to, um, do one more ultrasound. She was like, we're gonna send you to um, another facility where they have, you know, a better setup for ultrasounds. Cause the doctor I was going to, she was just wheeling in this machine that did an ultrasound on something that looked like a laptop. And so they sent me to another doctor that was like downtown. And I went to that one and this place was like, there was like a whole room dedicated to doing an ultrasound and they like dim the lights and there was like a TV on the ceiling so I could see what they were seeing. And so I was like, okay, this is legit. And at this point, um, in between my second ultrasound where they said, yeah, there's nothing there, there's nothing's gonna happen. And this appointment, um, I went ahead and went and bought my wedding dress because I was planning on getting married in October. And um, after being told twice that this wasn't going to be a pregnancy, it wasn't, you know, anything happening, we went ahead and we're going ahead with our wedding planning because we just assumed, all right, and nothing's going on. Um, so bought my wedding dress and went to this appointment and... Um, the lady was, you know, doing the ultrasound, and I guess she probably didn't realize that I had been told twice that that wasn't a good pregnancy, and she was doing my ultrasound, and she um, she goes, okay, look, there, there's your baby, and there's its heartbeat, and you can see just this little bitty, like, jelly bean, and it's got a little flicker, and I was just like, what? <laughs> um, and the lady's like, yeah, it's cool, right? And I'm like, uh, that okay, like that, that's a baby. <laughs> um, and so I went home and my husband knew I had this appointment and went home and, um, he didn't go with me just because we assumed it was going to be a third one of them telling me like, yeah, there's nothing, nothing's going on there. Um, so I went home and, um, at the appointment, they gave me those little printout pictures of, um, of, you know, your ultrasound. And so I went home and he was like, how did it go? 
and I took that picture out of my purse and handed it to him and he was like, what is this? <laughs> and I was like, that's, that's our baby. And he was like, so you are pregnant? <laughs> um, and I was like, yep. Um, so from there, we had a lot of, I wouldn't, panic isn't the right word because we weren't panicking that I was pregnant. Um, the problem was is that I was due in October and um, we were getting married in October and it was a destination wedding. Um, and so we had already told our whole family and sent out our invitations for the wedding. And so people were starting to book flights and book hotels and stuff like that. And so I didn't have the option to wait until the 12 week mark to start telling people that I was pregnant. I had to tell people sooner because I was really worried about people um, scheduling things that were non-refundable or they wouldn't be able to, you know, cancel or whatever. Um, thankfully us, you know, we hadn't booked, booked our hotel or our airfare yet. Um, but I did already pay my deposit for where we were getting married at. Um, but that wasn't a huge problem. So we immediately, I think maybe like a week later started telling people, um, we told, I don't know who we told first. I actually think we told a coworker first because we were really just like desperately dying to tell somebody. Um, and I don't know if you guys don't know, I guess, but um, my husband and I work at the same place, like exact same schedule at the time. So, you know, we were at work and one of our like good friends there, we were just like, uh, we're pregnant <laughs> because we were so desperate to tell somebody something. And she was just like, oh my God, like so excited. And so that kind of gave us like the courage, like, you know, the boost that we needed to start telling other people. Um, cause we were really worried, not worried. I, I'm more worried about what people think about me, Tyler, not so much. Um, but I was worried about telling people like we're pregnant and they're going to be like, really? Like you guys are trying to plan your wedding and you're pregnant. Like that's why you're planning a wedding. Like, but it really didn't happen in that order. We, it happened and we got engaged and I found out I was pregnant. So, um, so then we told, you know, my dad and my stepmom and of course they were like super excited and I knew they would be because my I from the beginning had a, an idea that it was a boy and I knew my dad would be super excited because he's always wanted a son and he got two girls so I knew that if I ever had a son that that kid is going to be spoiled so I just knew that they would be super excited and then you know from there we told you know like Tyler's sister and my mom and just everybody and for some reason, everybody's reaction was like, oh my God, I knew it. And I was like, how do you guys know it? Like, I didn't even know it. Like, what are you talking about? They're like, I knew you were going to be pregnant or I knew you were pregnant. I'm like, what? So yeah, so we told the very, you know, immediate family so that they could stop planning for our destination wedding because our wedding was going to be on the 20th and I was due on the 6th. So it just was not an option to take in infant to Colorado, which is where we were going. Um, and so we had to cancel that and look into a different option, um, which was, it ended up being fine. But anyways, um, my pregnancy overall, which what my doctor would say was average and normal, which it was. I mean, there was, thankfully I had no complications, like no issues, nothing, no scares, nothing. Um, and I'm really thankful for that. But I will say that I don't know if I'm willing to do it again. Like, I don't know if I would want to have another kid strictly because I just had a really unenjoyable pregnancy. Um, and I know people are like, oh, I wish I love being pregnant. I wish I was pregnant again. And I miss feeling like that. And I just, I was so miserable from beginning to end that I can't imagine doing it again. Um, unless I'm just like desperately want Silas to have a sibling, which I don't even know. Um, I like, you know, for starters had morning sickness for way longer than what they tell you you're going to have it. I think the average is like 15 to 20 weeks and I definitely had it until like 25 weeks or past that. And it was like not morning sickness. It was just kind of whenever during the day sickness, which they don't tell you that either, I guess, or nobody told me that. Um, I had the classic, like, you know, I would wake up and just be sick and so I would try not to eat immediately because it's way easier throwing up if you haven't had anything to eat than eating immediately and then throwing up after. 
Um, and so that would happen or I would eat breakfast and be fine and then get to work and have to throw up. So that was pretty miserable for me and I just wasn't, you know, I think that uh, counted towards me not gaining any weight for this pregnancy really is because I couldn't really keep any food down. Um, that and then something that nobody tells me and I'm sure uh, me being overweight caused a lot of these problems, which I'm aware of and that's, you know, it is what it is. Um, but my hands maybe, I don't know, like maybe like five months in just went completely numb. I can't feel them. It started at my fingertips and just one of my hands on my left hand, which is weird because I'm not left-handed just the fingertips and then eventually it was the whole hand and then eventually it was both hands. Couldn't feel them. They were just completely numb the whole time. Like it just felt like my hands were asleep and they never ever regained feeling until I like two or three weeks after having him. And um, like I said before, I work for 911 and so like my hands are kind of important. I have to type at a certain speed and, um, and accuracy. And so, my speed was still there, but it was just more like, oh, I spelled that word wrong, like backspace, 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 because I couldn't feel where my fingers were at. I couldn't feel what, what buttons I was touching. Um, and so it was getting really frustrating for me. And then just day-to-day -day things, it's really hard to open stuff when you can't feel your hands. Um, that, and then of course, like the back pain, you know, the classic pains, your feet swell, no shoes fit um, and I can't wear flip-flops to work so I just bought ballet flats that I wore until they got a hole in them and I went, went and buy more and wore, wear those until they got a hole in them um, because that's the only thing that my feet would fit in. Um, thankfully, I was never, I never got gestational diabetes. I did take the glucose test and I failed it the first time. And then I had to do the really long one um, where I had to sit in office for about three or four hours and they drew my blood every hour. Um, and that one I passed. Even then my doctor was like, yeah, you just barely passed that one. Um, so just be aware of what you're eating, which obviously um, I knew that. Um, and my doctor never said this, but I think it was just my family that convinced me that I was going to have him early. Um, I was just under the impression that I was going to have him earlier, that I wasn't going to make it to October. And I was really hoping I made it to October because my birthday is at the end of September. And um, being like the selfish person that I am, I was like, I don't want to share my birthday with anybody. Um, I really hope I can make it to October because at least it's in a whole nother month. Um, and so I was like, I'm just convinced that I was going to have him early. And I was like, as long as I don't have him on my birthday, then we'll be good. Um, and so, you know, my birthday came and went and then uh, as it got to the last week, my doctor was talking about how, you know, he was concerned because he was showing to be a, a bigger baby and he wasn't very surprised because my husband and I are, you know, bigger people. Um, and so he was convinced that he, he didn't think that I should have him, um, vaginally because, um, he was worried that halfway through I would end up having to have a c-section anyway and so we were just waiting and waiting for me to go into labor naturally just to see if it was going to happen um, and then my due date came and went and I had my last like doctor's appointment and he was just like well I know you're due you know in a couple days and you haven't had him yet or you're not showing any signs of contraction. He wasn't dropped. My, you know, cervix was still closed. Um, and so he's like, let's just wait it out a little bit. And I was like, you want me to what? I don't want to be pregnant anymore. I want you to take this kid out of me. Like, don't even, I don't, I didn't think going past my due date was an option. Um, nobody ever explained that to me or told me that was a thing either. So yeah. And so I waited um, and I had a, an appointment three days after my due date and my doctor was like, all right, well, since you're not showing anything, you know, new, no signs, no nothing, we'll go ahead and schedule a C-section, um, because, you know, there, he was worried if he would induce me, like I said, that, uh, he would, you know, get stuck or I wouldn't be able to like just physically do it. Um, and so we scheduled a C-section for the very next day. 
and that I will say was by far the like I hate to say the best experience because it's like a surgery and it's very serious and a lot of people have complications and they end up having to have emergency c-sections but I will say that a scheduled one was like by all means like just it was so easy and I would definitely do that again because um, I think I was scheduled for like 11.30. You get there a couple hours before. The nurses were so nice and like so reassuring and just talking me through everything that they're doing. And I'm just, I'm not a nervous person to begin with. Um, so I was just kind of mellowed out and chill. And, um, you know, it, that the longest part is just the whole preparation. And then they wheel you into this room. And there's like, I don't know, like eight other people in there, like doctors and nurses and just whoever else and so um I will say the the spinal tap or the epidural that they do that kind of hurt and I still to this day feel like residual pain from that or it's very hard for me if I'm sitting for too long or if I sit on the ground it's really hard for me to get up like just this pain there um that hurt to have that done but then immediately after of course you feel nothing and i'm just laying there and kind of like you're aware but you're just kind of like and i'm like what's going on and they told me okay we're gonna like pinch you and then make sure you know you're numb um and so i was just talking to the nurses talking to my husband and they're like okay like we tested you and you didn't do and you didn't jump or anything so you're good and i was like oh okay like all right cool i didn't feel anything you know from like my belly button down anyway um, and so I was just kind of laying there listening to everything that was going on. They had like music playing and they asked me if I had a preference. I was like, nope, not really. Um, and then before I knew it, somebody was like, okay, you're going to feel some pressure. That's them pushing him out, like doing the work for you. And I was just like, oh my God, like I'm already cut open. I didn't even know. And then I did just barely feel anything. And then the first thing my doctor says is like, okay, we've got a head. And then the next thing he says is, yeah, it's a big head. And I'm like, oh, great. My kid's got a big head. Um, and they pull him out and you start, you hear that first cry. And I'm just like, this is real. Like this actually just happened. Um, and they went and were putting him on the scale to weigh him. And everybody in the room was taking like, not bets, but they were all making bets about how much he weighed because apparently he was a big baby he looked like one and so everybody all the doctors and nurses and when they're like oh guessing weights and stuff and um they weighed him and he weighed 10 pounds eight ounces so then all the nurses that were in there were like oh good job doctor like good job suggesting a c-section because that would have been a, a struggle and i'm like yeah thanks doctor like i'm really glad that you suggested that <laughs> that kid was almost, you know, 10, he is 10 and a half pounds, like almost 11 pounds. Like that's ridiculous. That's a big baby. Um, and they were like, of course you do skin to skin after. And they're like, normally we would set him on your chest, but since he's such a big baby, like we don't want to set him there cause we're afraid he's going to roll off. So they just kind of brought him to me and set him near me and just held him there for a second. And I have a, a great, like my favorite picture where it's super cute, where he's just like laying right here and we're face to face. But I really, in that moment felt like I was like, and I was just like, baby. Um, and so then they took him and we're cleaning him off. And my husband like went and was taking all the pictures and stuff. And I was just kind of laying there like, like I felt like I was looking in that general direction, but I couldn't see anything. I don't know what I was looking at. Um, and it was over and the, the whole thing took like 30 minutes. So, like, really, that part was super easy for me. Um, I had zero issues with healing, even though they were really concerned about, you know, my incision getting um, infected or anything like that. Um, but it really was super easy. And, of course, I wouldn't trade him for anything, even though he did uh, conflict with our destination wedding. But maybe someday we'll go there and, like, renew our vows or something. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that was my experience and our story of how we found out that I was pregnant and just kind of our situation. Um, maybe I will make another video about the after part, about his first two months of life. And I did have a lot of complications with breastfeeding and I still do to this day. So maybe I'll make a video about that and our struggles and what we've encountered 
thus far and what I'm learning and what I have learned. But yeah, um, I'm gonna go to sleep now. I just got off of work, decided that I should film this video because I'm trying to be productive and still figuring out this whole vlogging thing and I really want to prove to myself that I can keep up with it. So yeah, thanks for watching guys.